Hey everyone, this is Justin from Frontly again and welcome to another video tutorial. Today, I'm going to showcase one of our biggest updates to the platform that you may have missed. We've really leveled up your custom actions at Frontly by introducing nonlinear, visually mapped out action trees that will execute based on the conditions you set for it. Meaning, actions are now even more dynamic and responsive to the inputs of your users than ever before. I'll demonstrate this on this app for a local golf league where users new to the app will be filling out responses for this full page form where their choices will stream down this action tree to produce one of four possible outcomes. Watch how I add these steps to my action flow and see how I set my conditions to drive the experience I want to create for my users. So without any further ado, let's jump into it. Let's set the stage by showing you the first stop for my newly signed up users in this app, the full screen form. You'll see here all the questions I intend for them to answer, all with equally valid use cases that can be helpful for my Frontly app elsewhere or combined with a workflow automation tool like Make and another SaaS product. In fact, this question here very much ties back to a previous video where I showed you how you can turn your user signups to contacts for your mailing list with just three simple steps. You should check out that video too if you thought about doing something similar on your app. Focusing back on what we're trying to achieve for this video, I want to give my users the choice of their homepage through this question right here which will also determine where the app will navigate them after they submit this form as well. So if they pick upcoming events, they will be directed to the upcoming events page. If they pick leaderboard, they'll be directed to the leaderboard page. You get the idea. Each decision in this case will require us to create a separate action inside of our action flow. So keep that in mind. All actions, just as they always have been at Frontly, must begin with an event trigger. Whether your users are submitting a form, clicking a record, or just logging in, wherever you see these symbols across your app editor is where you can set up the building blocks of your action sequence. Let's start by creating my first action through the complete button action here. Among all the functions I can choose from this action selector, I'll pick the one that updates my active users custom fields. In my user settings, I have a homepage custom field with values that can be added manually or through an action automation like the one I'm setting up now. Every question in your full page form is tied to a field ID. For the homepage custom field to source its values from my user's inputs, I will need to enter the corresponding field ID with the form dynamic variable. In my case, I mirrored the field ID with the user field so this is how it will look. There's another step outside of the action tree I'll need to complete in order to ensure their selection becomes the user's default page when they log in. So wait just a little ahead in the video for that final step. Inside my action flow still, I'm going to create four more action nodes on the next level down by clicking this little plus symbol here. One, two, three, four. One for each option from my form that the user can select as their home page. My goal here is to direct my users after submitting this form to their requested landing page. Let me skip ahead a bit with my configuration and I will explain how I've set each node up. Okay, so I've actually completed my entire setup for this action flow. Let's start with just the second level. I have all of my actions set up here with the navigate page ones. Inside each of them point to a different page. Again, one for each option that I've listed on my form. Inside each model, I additionally have a run condition which will allow the action to execute if and only if the conditions I've defined are met. For instance here, my users will be navigated to the upcoming events page if their homepage value, the option they chose, is equal to that. The same goes along for these two other actions, but I haven't yet done it for this one, just to show you how it's done. Clicking into it, you'll see that this action points to the players page. So to create a run condition, you click the add condition button, click into the modal, and then set your values. For value one, your data source, I will be selecting 
the user field, which is the home page one. I can leave the operator on its own here. For the second value, that will be the player's value. And that'll be it for my setup for this level. The actions on the third level are actually all identical. This is the action that will be updating my mailing list if the user chooses to opt into it. If you're wondering why I added them as four actions down four separate nodes instead of one at the very top, this leads me to explain two very important points about Frontly's custom action system. The first is because if I had placed it at the top of the action tree with run conditions that were not met when the event was triggered, then none of the actions after the first layer would have executed either, meaning only the users that opt into the mailing list would have had their navigation action work as intended. So how you order your actions with conditions is important. The second important point, events with actions consisting of multiple branches like this will only ever execute one action per level, meaning it will only ever go down one path and never sideways into another action on its own level. Therefore, how you set up your run conditions is absolutely crucial in deciding how the rest of your action steps cascade, which is why I needed to set up the same identical final action down each node to ensure it happens in any navigation outcome. Make sure your run conditions are clearly defined and distinct from one another if they're on the same level. Otherwise, you will encounter issues. As I mentioned earlier, the final stage of my setup requires me to configure one last thing outside of the action flow that I just created. This will take me over to my user settings where I'll have to create a new action step that will trigger when my users log in to their app located here. As I click into it, you can see this is a single level non-linear setup that's identical to the navigate page level on the forms submit action sequence. The only addition is a toggle right here that disables my app's original default page, which is the form when they first sign up. So finally, a quick live demonstration of the form being completed and navigating me to the respective page. And that's really all there is. So thanks a lot for tuning into our video tutorial today, everyone. This is one of many functions at Friendly that we're proud to have grown and evolved since we first launched. We really appreciate the views and positive feedback we get from you every day. So spread the word, like, comment, and subscribe if you want to continue seeing more content like this on a regular basis. Happy building, and we hope you have a great day.